Hello guys, welcome to another SOAP UI web service testing tutorial from rcvacademy.com. In this tutorial, we are going to understand about some of the basic assertions in SOAP UI. So till now we have been doing a lot of uh, groovy stuff and designing the end-to-end -end automation test case using um, Groovy and also we have understood a lot of basic stuff in SOAP UI. But uh, the next thing uh, very important in, in terms of testing or automation testing or even manual testing is to verify what exactly is the response from the system and that is the key part of the testing whether it be it your automation testing or be it your manual testing. Now assertions in SOAP UI do that verification for you. And in the last tutorial of Groovy end-to-end -end test case, we have seen that we have utilized the assert keyword to verify the response from the response XML. Now, if you want to do, um, you know, like uh, the manual testing or even you are designing the automated test cases, SOAP UI provides a lot of uh, built-in assertions that you can utilize. So let's understand how you can put the assertions in the request uh, in the response and verify that the response that you are getting as part of the testing is actually what you are expecting and there will be combination of multiple responses that you can utilize now to open the assertions what you need to do is so for example if you hear um, if you see all these um, test suites here and then when we start creating the project right if we, if i just open this particular request which is part of the project uh, and not uh, there is no test suite or test case created you won't find any of the assertion options here and that's the reason why you need to create the test suite and test cases because once you create the test suite and test cases like we have here this, this is the test suite then we have the test case and test steps below that then if i open any of the request below that you will see this plus icon here which is uh, adding an assertion to this particular item and at the bottom as well you will see assertions uh, little icon here present with assertions name and that's this is the plus sign that you can click to add more assertions so let's understand what are, what are some of the basic assertions let me uh, remove these assertions that are available here so to remove the assertion just highlight it and click on this little cross icon and click yes so i have removed all the assertions in this multiply request let me run it and yeah so now you can see that because there are no assertions if you see my highlighted uh, pointer here it is it has not turned green because we haven't added any assertions and that is why the request went and the response even though response is there it didn't uh, turn to green because it it couldn't figure out whether it's pass or fail it just send a request and response so once you add the assertion if the test case passes it turns to the icon turns to green if it uh, fails then icon turns to red now to add the assertion let's understand what all assertions are present so on this particular page here in the assertions uh, soap ui you have different categories of assertions so recently used will show what all recent assertions you have used uh, just to make it more handy then you have the property content which verifies what are the contents in the property or request uh, that you have sent or request response so contains is basically it will verify the content of the response not contains will verify non-existence of a value or property or you know uh, the string then the second category is the compliance status and standard which is basically verifies uh, the compliance of the request uh, compliance of the uh, you know like response that you are getting http status codes um, valid and invalid and then the standards so there are many uh, assertions available on this page then you have the script assertions which we'll cover in the later tutorial sla and jms and then we have security which 
checks for the sensitive inf uh, information whether a sensitive information is exposed or not so these are some of the key assertions here so for example let's understand the property content the contains assertion so if i click on contains and add it will pop up a window and what content you are going to verify so for example i am just verifying that content 100 is present and if i hit ok and now you can see that icon has turned green because this assertion valid contains valid has passed if i change it to thousand and hit ok now you can see it has turned to red because this particular assertion has failed so that is how you do contains assertion and in contains assertion you can use any you know like keyword or uh, even the text so any text number whatever you are trying to verify you can provide that into the contains assertion next is the not contains so basically when we say not contains is the non-existence of the property say so for example in the response you are not looking for any of the tag or say for example you're not looking for password tag to be available in the response so that is the not contains so in the response it couldn't find the password anywhere and it has passed that assertion so we have covered contains and not contains these are very simple assertions that are most of the time that you will be using in your SOAP UI test cases then the next ones are the compliance status and standards uh, category so in this one what all you have is invalid HTTP status codes so what this status code does is it verifies that which are the status code or HTTP status codes that are not valid okay so for example um, if you say 500 status code is not valid then you just add that and it will uh, verify that that particular status code is not available in the response so if you go to this response and go to the raw here you see these are the status code so 200 okay is basically what you should be getting so this is the successful uh, status code and if you are saying that 200 is invalid and okay then this will fail because there is a 200 status code that is available okay so whatever invalid status code you have say for example you are discussing with developer and you get uh, to know what all invalid status codes uh, you should be verifying you just provide those numbers in the invalid status code here okay and the next one is so we have covered the invalid HTTP status code and then not contains sorry so not so fault okay so what this validates is that the last received message is not so fault okay so if there is a so fault then this will fail the next one that we want to cover is the schema compliance which is also very important that it will come it will verify that the response is compliant to the schema okay now what you have to specify is specify definition url to validate so you just provide the url this is the schema that it will validate against and it will verify that the response is whether the response is compliant with the schema or not okay so that's another one for the schema compliance uh, the next one is the so fault and it what it will do is it validates that the last received message message should be a soap fault okay if it is not a soap fault this step will fail now if we add this one then you'll see that it has this assertion has failed because the last message was not so fault it's it's a successful message it's not a so fault and that's why this assertion will fail so you can use either one i mean uh, either you are verifying so fault or you're verifying not so fault okay so we have covered schema compliance we have covered so fault and we have covered so response valid http uh, codes and we have also covered invalid HTTP status code. So 
uh, along with invalid st http codes you can also specify the valid ones okay so for example 200 is what we are expecting in the response okay and if it will find that 200 http code in the response the test will pass now the next one is ws addressing response security status which we'll cover in the later tutorials script sla and jms are also the other ones which will uh, which are the advanced assertions which we'll cover later and we'll cover the security assertion so security assertion checks for the sensitive information in your response and this is very important so for example in the in your response you are not uh, you are looking for that the password or any any tag related to password is not being sent all right so you can use the security information exposure and provide the token that you are looking for that shouldn't exist okay so you'll just say uh, i'll say password and then i'll enter the description for that and that should not be present so you can say security information exposure that has passed because in the re in the response there is no password tag or con uh, content there but if i change it to something which is present in the response this sensitive information uh, token will fail so if i j just say token to multiply result and hit ok you can see that this it found this token and because of that this is the token that shouldn't be there in the response it's a security breach and the assertion will fail so these are some of the basic very basic assertions that you most of the time use in all your um, you know soap ui test cases so contains not contains http code uh, your schema compliance your valid or invalid http code uh, your so fault or not so fault and then sensitive information so these are very very basic uh, assertions that you use you will be using most of the time when you are doing api testing using soap ui so that's pretty much for the basic assertions in soap ui hope you like the tutorial thank you very much for watching